Signs of life were discovered on Venus, but how is this possible? Maybe instead of Mars, more resources should be spent on exploring this planet. Well, to get a clear picture of the situation, let's start from the beginning. Within the last 50 years, space exploration has made leaps and bounds. Between the various moon missions, Mars rovers, and the establishment of private space companies, the next few decades will likely yield even bigger and more ambitious discoveries. With NASA gearing up for more moon missions and SpaceX preparing to put people on Mars within a decade, the sky's the limit. But what does that mean for future human civilizations? Is there the possibility for life elsewhere? Because of his dedication to Mars habitation, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is often the first to field questions regarding the aliens and potential for human colonization on other planets within our solar system. As current space research and technologies continue to open up new doors into the wider universe, the questions regarding habitability also continue to arise. Often, Mars is the first planet that comes to mind due to the overwhelming research and present plans by SpaceX to create a human colony on its surface. And according to Elon Musk, it is humankind's most likely opportunity to pass through the Great Filter and achieve interplanetary status. But recent findings from Venus have suggested that Mars might not be our only option. It's already fact, and scientists and researchers revealed that they have found trace amounts of phosphine gas in the clouds above Venus. This, according to everything currently known about the second planet from the Sun, shouldn't even be possible. Why exactly? Because based on what we know about the existence of phosphine on our planet, it only exists as a man-made product, or in the presence of the microorganisms that create it as a byproduct. So how is this possible? Is this related to another civilization? Because Venus has long been thought to have a hostile environment of acid rain, surface temperatures of over 860 degrees Fahrenheit, and an air pressure that is 90 times that of Earth's. Most astronomers have ruled out the possibility of life existing on its surface. However, the presence of phosphine gas suggests that microorganisms could be living in the clouds, where scientists found traces of its existence. The discovery was made by astronomer Jane Greaves out of Cardiff University in Wales. She began looking for phosphine light patterns on Venus after hearing that they could be a biosignature for alien astronomers looking for life on our planet. Her findings were then supported by similar findings captured by a telescope in Chile. Though researchers didn't expect to find such stunning evidence, this finding opens a variety of questions regarding Venus's habitability. Furthermore, a few days ago, a historical event happened. NASA published a full analysis of the images and video of Venus's entire night side. These are first images of Venus's surface in visible light. Were taken in July 2020 and it changes everything. With these images, we can say for sure that Venus has more similarities to Earth than we ever thought. In these images, you can see continental regions, plateaus, and plains. It's amazing. Until now, there was not much information about what the surface of Venus looked like. Now, after this historical achievement, there is a clearer picture. So does this discovery change everything? Is Venus suitable for life? For most of recent astronomical history, astronomers and space researchers have believed Venus to be a very tough place for humans to live there. Even Elon Musk, with his optimistic views on the habitability of other planets, has cast doubt on Venus as our next planet for habitation. And of course, Elon Musk was asked about why SpaceX is not attempting to land rockets on Venus. And as Elon said, people don't understand how difficult this task would be and what is at stake here. In a series of tweets, Musk has stated that Venus would be difficult and that Venus has a tough local environment. However, while Venus is the closest planet to Earth, it would take just over three months to land on its surface, and its size, density, and mass are very similar to Earth's. Its atmosphere and surface temperatures are much more extreme, made up primarily of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid, meaning humans would not be able to breathe without oxygen apparatuses. Additionally, the surface can reach temperatures of up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that any water present would immediately boil and evaporate. Venus's temperatures are so intense that they can melt lead, and no spacecraft that has landed on the planet has lasted longer than a few hours before melting and breaking down. Though the cloud temperatures are less extreme, they rotate around the planet every four days because of the hurricane-strength winds present in the atmosphere. Not to mention, an atmosphere with a pressure that is 90 times that of Earth's. Its high carbon dioxide composition creates a perfect example of a runaway greenhouse gas effect. In addition to the extreme temperatures, Venus rotates in the opposite direction of all the other planets in the solar system, meaning the sun would rise in the west and set in the east. Though this is not a huge deal, what does make a big difference is that while Venus takes only 225 days to orbit the sun, the length of a day on Venus lasts 117 Earth days. This would make scheduling on the Venusian calendar much more complicated than scheduling on Earth's. Additionally, the surface of Venus features a variety of volcanic ranges, some of which are still active. 
These eruptions could present dangers to any life forms living within their proximity. While the recent proof of phosphine in the clouds could suggest the presence of microorganisms, all of these factors make the possibility for water-based life forms as we know them to be highly unlikely. However, this does not mean Venus was always uninhabitable. Recent studies have suggested that originally, Venus may have been habitable to certain life forms. Measurements taken by NASA's Pioneer mission in the 1980s suggested that Venus may once have had an ocean, meaning that water was initially present on its surface. However, because Venus is so close to the Sun and receives so much sunlight, scientists believe that the oceans eventually evaporated. Once the water was gone, and with it the hydrogen, carbon dioxide took over and built up in the atmosphere. This is what led to the intensified greenhouse gas effect we currently see on the planet's surface, though it is unclear whether or not microbial life had the opportunity to form before the oceans evaporated. The phosphine present in the clouds could suggest that if it did, after the water evaporated, the microorganisms found a home above the surface. Though Venus is our closest interstellar neighbor, it doesn't look like a likely future home for space travelers. While we would have a quick commute, 97 days to Mars, two years, we would likely melt under the intense heat or the harsh acidic rains. With this hostile environment, Venus is unlikely to be suitable for water-based life forms. However, as scientists continue to study the second planet from the Sun, we may see further evidence of microorganisms living within the clouds above its surface. If recent findings are correct about the presence of phosphine, and if phosphine truly is a biomarker of the possibility for life, then time will only tell what else is hiding in the cloud coverage above Venus's surface. Don't forget to subscribe, and until next time.